Welcome friends, today we are back with another Nancy Drew game. This is Treasure in the Royal Tower, and this is the fourth game of the series, and apparently a very cozy one. So I've gone ahead and made myself some hot chocolate, and I'm excited to play this with you all. Hi there, it's me, Nancy Drew. You're just in time for my latest mystery, Treasure in the Royal Tower. Choose your difficulty Junior level. Detective, Dear as George, usual. so much for my Wisconsin ski vacation. I arrived here at Wickford Castle last night, just before a blizzard swept in. The mountain is completely shut down, and the surrounding roads are closed. I think I'm one of the few guests who made it to the castle at all. The place is huge and old, and slightly creepy under the circumstances. You should hear this wind. What's more, the owner, Christy Lane, my father's friend, is away on business. I tried to ask the caretaker, Dexter Egan, how I could contact her, but he said he didn't know. Doesn't that seem odd? I couldn't help feeling like there was something he wasn't telling me. All this makes me a little nervous, but I'm determined to enjoy myself. After all, this is a vacation, right? I have big plans to explore the castle. That Ezra Wickford, the original owner, must have been quite a character to have built such an extraordinary place. It's filled with strange, dead-end corridors, for one thing. And I noticed one of the towers is totally different from the other ones. Of course, I'll have to save some time to meet Jacques Brunet, the French ski instructor. <laughs> Tell Best she'll be the first to know if he's half as gorgeous in person as he looks on his website. So, George, I guess things never quite go according to plan, but at least this time, the culprit is just a snowstorm. Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. Now all I need is a mailbox. Already off the bat, the caretaker doesn't know how to get in contact with the owner. Um, okay. Our room key must be returned when we check out. 205. Locker, 310. Oop, notebook time. Also, keep watching until the end of the video. I have a bonus that I wanted to share with you all, but if you don't want to watch the whole thing, of course you can just skip. I'll put a timestamp in there. But anyways. Alrighty, here we go. Our first note of the game. What is that noise? can order food here. Okay, definitely gonna need that later. Welcome to Wickford Castle. In 1920, Ezra Wickford, the inventor of chocolate milk, dreamed of building a castle like no other. It took seven years, a million dollars, it became an architectural marvel. 1945, Wickford mysteriously locked himself away in the castle and allowed the place to fall into a state of decline. After Wickford's death, the castle was closed down for many years, its fate unknown, until it was finally inherited and reopened by his great niece, Christy Lane. Now it is one of the most popular vacation resorts in the Midwest. No one knows why Ezra included these dead ends in his castle design, but everyone agrees he must have quite an imagination. I bet those dead ends are not dead ends, they probably have secret passageways. During his travels in France, Wickford became so enchanted with the Chateau Rochemont that he bought the castle's grand tower and had it built onto the castle in 1924. Few people have ever seen the inside of the tower because he kept it sealed off, the tower is still closed, but in the coming months, Christy Lane plans to open it up to guests and offer guided tours. She also plans to restore the vintage elevator to its original condition. Outdoor Attractions Skiing on some of the best groomed slopes in the Midwest. Guests love the hike. Mountain fields are covered with the region's magnificent wildflowers. Look for ladies' slippers, skunk cabbage, black-eyed Susans, blah blah blah. You're bound to have an adventure! Okay. Sounds like there's a science experiment going on in this room. Should we call Ned? Sounds like the radiator is broken. Oh. Sassy detective. <laughs> What's in her bag? Amateur detectives and the sleuthy gadgets they won't leave home without. 
Using fingerprints to determine keypad access codes. Ooh. You know what? Let's be a good girlfriend and call her boyfriend. Operator? Guess no operator then. Ned. Hi, you've reached Ned at Omega Chi Epsilon. I'm not here to take your call right now, so please try again later. Thanks. Ned is in a fraternity? Hi, you've reached the Fane residence, but no one's home to take your call. Please run five laps around the castle and try again later. Okay, let's explore the castle. Ooh, we're okay, let's go this way first. The first thing we should do is find the caretaker so he can fix our radiator. Ooh. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. So many rooms. Dead end. <laughs> Ooh. Hello, Miss Drew. Did you get squared away upstairs? <laughs> yes, thanks, Mr. Egan. My room is charming, but I think there's something wrong with my radiator. It hisses, and there's a clanging noise, too. Would you mind checking it out for me? Sorry about that inconvenience, but you're just gonna have to sit tight for a while. I'm the only one on duty while the owner's away, and around here it seems like even if it ain't broke, it still needs fixing. Last time I checked, there were only 24 hours in a day. And now, to make matters worse, there have been a couple of... incidents. Oh no. What kind of incidents? Someone vandalized our historic library. Really turned the place upside down. The owner, Miss Lane, she's gonna be pretty upset. When could this have happened? I have no idea. I straightened up in there before check-in yesterday and everything was fine. Now it looks like a bomb went off. Books everywhere, and somebody hacked a big hole in one of the walls. I locked the place up and called the police, but who knows when they'll be able to get here. Oh, that's no good. The police? Was anything stolen? I can't tell, but somebody's definitely after something. What else has gone wrong? Well, this Professor Hotchkiss just called me in a terrible flap, <laughs> saying our room's been robbed. I went up there, but she wouldn't open the door to talk about it. Wouldn't even tell me what was missing. So what's she want me to do about it? Fair. Sounds like you're swamped, Mr. Egan. Is there any way I can help? Well, Hotchkiss has a pair of ski boots in the basement. The Frenchman's been working on them for her, but he won't deliver them. Says he's a ski instructor, not a bellhop. I hate to ask this, but if you could grab those boots and bring them up to her, it might smooth her feathers. Sure would smooth mine. Of course I will. I will help you out. Can you do something about my radiator? Sorry, not yet. So, how long have you been working here? A while. <laughs> okay. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. No, you are a trooper, Mr. Egan. Ooh, can I go behind? I should wait until I'm alone. <laughs> okay. Major figures and events of the French Revolution. Marie Antoinette. She was obliged to wed Louis the 16th. Yeah, I can read Roman numerals. <laughs> yeah, the 16th of France to symbolize an alliance between France and her parents' dynasty of Austria. Four years later, she became Queen of France when her husband was crowned King Louis the 16th. As queen, her lavish lifestyle made her unpopular. While the commoners stood in bread lines praying for food, they cursed the queen who was living so comfortably in her grand palace. The people's discontent grew and grew until a full-scale revolution broke out in 1789. It looked like the monarchy would not survive. It was arranged for the king and queen to escape Paris on the night of June 20th, but the revolutionary forces apprehended the royal couple at Varenne on June 25th and escorted them back to Paris as prisoners. Monarchy was overthrown. Louis was executed on orders from the National Convention, and the Queen was put in solitary confinement. 
She was brought before the Revolutionary Tribunal and guillotined two days later. She was executed without proof of the crimes for which she was accused. The guillotine! Storming of the Bastille. Jean Leboeuf, Leboeuf, best known for foiling Louis and Marie Antoinette's attempt to escape Paris. He became a general under Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, amassed great wealth, and built a beautiful chateau that became known throughout the French upper class for its splendid library. He was killed by food poisoning that resulted from eating a can of rancid beef. Oh no. Man, there was a person there. Oh, here's the elevator. It's locked. Hmm. Definitely a door right there. You can't fool me. Well, how am I supposed to know which room is Hotchkiss? Sound of typing. It's locked. <laughs> Hello? Okay, they're not going to answer. Ooh, so pretty. Ooh. This one goes nowhere. Yet another dead end. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just noticed there's a little compass thing here. <laughs> oh, I still don't have a checklist. Man. Wait a minute. Didn't we read in the little pamphlet that she wants to fix the elevator because it's pretty old. I feel like we might die in this elevator at some point. Okay. Boots. Boots. Hmm. Pretty reasonable Bonjour, prices, I guess. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle Jacques Brunet. So, what brings you to beautiful Wisconsin? <laughs> What's your excuse? Hi, I'm Nancy. I came to ski, but it looks like I'm going to have to find other ways to entertain myself. I told Mr. Egan I would bring Professor Hotchkiss her boots. Are they ready? Uh, yes, I fixed her boots. Uh, but you should be relaxing by the fire, sipping cocoa, Nancy. Not running errands for Dexter. Why is it you American girls never know how to separate business from pleasure? I have cocoa, you American girls. Um, because we're hardworking? I don't know. <laughs> what about Sassy. you, Jacques? Do you give skiing lessons in Wisconsin for business or pleasure? Well, uh, with the weather so terrible, I suppose I get neither. But you see, I am here for Isabelle, mon petit chou. She's an American studying at the university in Madison, and I've asked her to marry me. That is excuse enough to be in Wisconsin, n'est-ce pas? And besides, I am not the first French work of art to end up here. Okay, so he's very... Mm, self-absorbed. Work of art? What are you talking about? I am speaking of the Queen's Tower, of course. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. Didn't you notice it when you drove in? Yes, I think Christy Lane mentioned it to me once. What can you tell me about it? Uh, Marie Antoinette used to visit this tower when she was Queen of France. Until she lost her head in the Revolution, that is. <laughs> a pretty girl should not hear about such ugly things. But tell me, uh, how will you spend your time here, Nancy? So, because we're a pretty girl, we can't know about history? Okay, sir. 
I'm dying to have a look inside that library. I heard it was vandalized. Do you know anything? Nancy, a pretty girl should not worry herself with this type of thing while she is on vacation. Uh, I should warn you, Dexter is very protective of this place. He does not take kindly to people snooping around where they should not. Is it because we're pretty or is it because we're a girl? What if we were ugly and a boy? Don't worry, Jacques. The last thing I want to do is get myself grounded. Ciao! Ciao. Wait, I wrote this down. 517. The combination is 517, but it's not working. Oh. It must have been. Reset, I guess. A sauna. <laughs> There, dead end. My name's Nancy Drew. <laughs> Elevator reset. <laughs> Oops. Ooh. What if I? What is the meaning of this? Turn them back on. <laughs> Sorry, Jacques. It's too dark. I should take the elevator. Yes, hello! Is that Jacques with my boots? <laughs> no, it's... me. Actually, it's Nancy Drew. But I do have your boots for you. Oh, good. Uh, boots, fine. Uh, thank you, thank you. Everything is fine. Uh, just leave the boots at the door, please. Hmm, yeah. Oh, and it seems I'm out of change. I'll just have to tip you the next time, Mandy. No tip is necessary, Professor Hotchkiss. I don't actually work here. My name's Nancy Drew. I heard your room was robbed, and I'd like to find out what was taken so that Mr. Egan can report it. Everything's under control, dear. Nothing to report. Uh, thank you for my boots. My poor feet have been feeling so exposed. Oh, okay. She didn't even take her boots. Are these my boots? Just leave the boots at the door, please. Hmm, yeah. He's not here. Snoop time. Pen pals, paper products. Shot down, ski lift, check emergency generator. Get Brunei to fix professor's boots. Our friend guess who canceled. Snow plows, try to reach Christy again. Change library alarm code. Change bulbs and tower. Replace filter and rent shaft. Keep searching. Get boots back to professor. Check basement circuit breaker. Get dinner orders from guests. That's it. Oh, wait, drawers. Key. Oh, I just took I don't know what that's for, but I took it. Maybe now Ned will pick up. So please try again later. Thanks. He doesn't love me. Oh, maybe this is to the library? Where is the elevator? Okay. Oh. It's locked. Guess he's working on the elevator right now. Ooh. <laughs> well, well, oh. well. Look who returned to the scene of the crime. You're out of here. Didn't you hear Dexter coming? 
Yeah, but I didn't know what to do. I guess I just froze. It's not like you, Nancy. You always know how to make an emergency exit. Maybe you really do need some rest. Who can think of rest and relaxation when there's a mystery to solve? the code. What is the library alarm code? I don't know. Ooh, what's over here? Old Chateau in Wisconsin. What am I supposed to do? Oh, he's closed. Paintbrush? I want to snoop in his stuff. Ugh, it's oh. like the North Pole out there. I wasn't expecting it to be the outside. So I guess I can't go outside yet? Maybe I should go to bed? How am I supposed to go to bed with this radiator? Did Hotchkiss get her boots? She did. Not yet, Mr. Egan. Hmm. That's a shame. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. So did he not give me her boots? Ah, uh, Nancy. Como se va? Dexter told me the combination to my locker, number 310, is 517. I tried it, but the locker won't open. Hmm. Dexter must be confused. Because I think that is the combination for number 311. Uh, try 311. Okay. Tell me about these boxes you're making. When I am not skiing, I need some other way to express myself. So voila! I make these hope boxes for keeping secrets safe. I'm sure you have many secrets, Nancy. Bold of you to assume that. Do you know much about the tower that's closed off? I heard the original owner imported it from France. It comes from the Chateau Rochemont in a town in France near where I grew up. And Marie Antoinette used to visit this tower when she was Queen of France. Until she lost her head in the revolution, that is. I'll talk to you later. Ciao! Ciao. Okay, let's try 311. Huzzah! Ooh, we have a camera? Oh, this is not ours. <laughs> Helen Carp. <gasps> Alina Boyd. <gasps> Tanya Lee! She's got some secret identities. Automatically suspicious. Automatically. I guess we'll try to give her her boots again? Open up! Oh, I was just supposed to leave them there? <sighs> okay, that's cool. <gasps> she just took them. Can I help you? About my radiator, Mr. Egan. Do you think you'll be able to fix it anytime soon? Sorry, not yet. Hotchkiss called to report that she got her boots. But now I'm told that the light is out in the back stairwell. Could you check the circuit breaker in the basement and make sure it's working? <laughs> okay, see ya, Mr. Egan. Bye, kiddo. Kiddo? I'm not your kiddo. Hi, I'm Lisa. Did you hear what happened? Someone broke into the library and vandalized it. Dexter locked it up. He's saying the culprit must be one of us in the castle. Can you believe it? Lisa? Or do you mean Helen? Or do you mean Alina? Or Tanya? Can't believe it. Yeah, Dexter just told me the library is a disaster area and that it's totally off limits. Too bad, huh? I'm dying to see what they did to it. Don't quote me on this. But I think Dexter has an extra key to the library somewhere around his desk. I guess you've really got your finger on the pulse around here. Any other castle scandal I should know about? Oh, we got scandal, honey. <laughs> Professor Hotchkiss is claiming she's been robbed, for one thing. But the real scandal is downstairs. His name is Jacques Brunet. What's the scandal with Jacques Brunet? va va voom Scandalous cuteness, of course. Didn't you watch the last Winter Olympics? He's France's big cheese of skiing. 
He holds the record for the 500 meter slalom, but he totally choked at the games. I guess he's washed up now, but at least his looks haven't gone down the tubes. Mm, I'm not really a fan so of So who's Professor Hodgkiss? Oh my gosh, wait till you hear this. Hotchkiss is this nutty old woman who's always typing and talking to herself in her room. I was walking past her door earlier, and I heard her screaming that her room had been robbed. Wow, did she say what was stolen? Not that I could hear. She just kept wailing, my theory, my theory. I think she teaches history, or maybe a foreign language. I thought I heard a couple of French words pop out of her mouth. But don't quote me on that either. I only barely passed Spanish in high school. Habla Espanol? Hardly. I'm just a humble photojournalist covering weird old mansions in the Midwest, and this place is one of the weirdest. Did you know Ezra Wickford, the original owner, shut himself away in here for like 50 years? You must know a great deal about this place. Not really, but I sure want to get into that tower that came from France. It'd be great for my story. Too bad Wickford sealed it off. Maybe it's his ghost making those creepy noises at night. Ghost? What noises? Oh, just your average bump in the night sound effects. It's probably just Dexter trying to spook up the hotel for the publicity. I mean, did we stumble onto the set of As the Castle Turns or what? Well, you probably want to get settled. I wonder what we're going to do with ourselves while we're all cooped up in this place. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. She's suspicious. She probably knows about some treasure in the castle. Hotchkiss probably knows about some treasure in the castle because she's teaching history. I don't know. We can just it's assume not. Jacques is pretty suspicious too. Nobody's off the hook. Ooh, okay, so I could use the paintbrush to see if I can get fingerprints off of the alarm code, but I don't have dust yet. Hmm, okay, I have to fix the breaker. I don't know what I'm supposed to be pressing. Hmm. Number three, number two. I think this is deadly. Um, I don't know. I think I did it. I don't want to pester you, Mr. Egan, but <clears throat> the, the radiator. radiator. Thanks for dealing with the circuit breaker. Okay, we're really making progress here, kid. So, you go up to Hotchkiss's room and see what she wants for dinner. She's not answering her phone. Okay, Just... see ya, Mr. Egan. Alrighty then. Keeps giving me tasks to do. It's not like I said... I would do everything for him, right? <laughs> oh well. Ugh! Virginia Woolf never endured such interruptions! Who is it? It's Nancy again. Dexter needs to know what you want for dinner. Oh, hard to think of food candy when I'm riding the raging rapids of my theory. Oh, right now, I have plenty of pre-packaged energy globules to keep me going. Globules. But tell Baxter that I am developing a powerful craving for couscous. Yes, couscous for dinner would be splendid. I'll have a nice tip for you next time, Fanny. Couscous. Okay, so I think they order that in my own room. Alright, so we have the menu. Maybe I have to give her the menu because there isn't couscous on the menu. I didn't finish reading it. It's locked. Oh, maybe I give them min what? Front desk. Dexter here. Hi, Mr. Egan. It's Nancy. I was wondering about the storm. Any signs of it letting up? Look, I'm up to my ears down here. I'll have to talk to you later. Sorry. What am I supposed to do with this menu then? I guess just talk to. Oh my gosh, it's even louder. I guess I will talk to Mr. Egan with the menu in my hand. Yes? The professor says she has a hankering for, um, couscous. Couscous? Never heard of it. Tell her to order something off the menu. Okay, 
See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Okay, now we have the menu, so we're just gonna show her the menu. Is that my couscous already? Sorry, Professor, but there's no couscous in the house. You'll need to choose something from the hotel menu. Well, I don't have a menu. At least not from this hotel. Oh, oh be a doll and, and fetch me one, will you? Ta-ta. I have one. I, and did you get the menu? Sure did. How about opening the door so I can give it to you? Oh, you're a sneaky one. <laughs> Just slip it under the door, please. Nice and easy. No funny stuff. She's very... Uh, oh, baby paranoid. back ribs, yes. Oh, chili cheese dog. Uh, 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 fried bologna sandwich. Uh, I'm not usually much of a meat eater, but uh, uh, very well. Fifty drumsticks, 50. please. Uh, chicken, that is. Uh, cluck, cluck. Sure. Fifty drumsticks. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Rock and roll, dear. <laughs> she didn't give me my menu back. Can I help you? The professor has changed her order. Seems she's developed an appetite for chicken drumsticks. Fifty of them. Okay then. Drumsticks we got. Oops. But I guess Jock better take that bag of chicken legs out of the freezer. Will you tell him? And then take the rest of the day off, kid. Your radiator's as good as fixed. Okay. See ya, Finally. Mr. Egan. You're a trooper. So Jacques is in charge of the skiing stuff and preparing the food? Nope. He's not here. Alright, let's go to the next day then. It's stuck. <gasps> what? Oh wait. It's what? stuck. It's stuck. I'm stuck in here? Oh. What is this box for? Oh, there's the door. Okay. Um. I'm not sure if I can make it. Okay. Here goes. supposed to get up come on Nancy please oh okay now I stepped up you good job Nancy if it isn't Nancy can do drew I'll get on that radiator right away but be sure to tell Jock to defrost the chicken, okay? Got it. I was in the elevator and it got stuck between floors. I had to climb out the top and I just barely made it up to the floor above. Do you think you'll be able to fix it? Well, I doubt it's broken. I'll check the power switch in the basement. Glad you're okay. But don't go climbing around the elevator shaft anymore. It's dangerous in there. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Alrighty then. Right, right, right. Okay. I just wish we had a checklist. Still not open? Ugh, it's like the North Pole out there. Come on, please pick up. Hi, you've reached Ned at Omega Chi Epsilon. I'm not Ned. here to take your call right now. Hello? George, it's Nancy. Hey. Great timing, Nancy. Bess and I were just saying how we wish we were out on the ski slopes with you. Hang on, I'll get her to pick up the other phone. Hey, Bess, our favorite detective's on the phone. <laughs> hey, Nancy, how's the vacation? I guess I should have mailed that letter. Not only do I have a blizzard on my hands, but I may have stumbled onto another case, too. The castle library was vandalized, and one of the other guests says her room was robbed. Boy, oh boy! Have you searched the library for clues yet? Well, that's the thing. Dexter Egan, the caretaker, says it's locked up and off limits until the police can get here. But who knows when that'll be. That's funny, Nancy. I didn't know the phrase off-limits was even in your <laughs> vocabulary. Seriously, though, don't you think that your dad's friend, Christy Lane, 
Would feel better knowing that you're on the case, at least until the police can take over? She's right, Nancy. I mean, who knows what this Egan guy is all about anyway? Sounds like you're just gonna have to find an alternative entrance to that library. Here I go again. Just hope I don't have to slide down the chimney. And what about this robbery? Who got robbed? I'm not sure. The guest's name is Professor Hodgkiss. I think she's a bit eccentric. <laughs> you mean weird? Nutso? A few sandwiches short of a picnic? Okay, you guys. I just mean that I'm not sure how reliable her testimony will be. Yeah, but she'll probably tell you something important, whether she means to or not. I met my ski instructor, Jacques Brunet. He sure is French. Ooh la la, those accents <laughs> should be illegal. I Ooh hate la to la. break it to you, Bess, but uh, he's engaged. Now there's a real crime. Right, Bess. Humanity is devastated. I met this nice woman, Lisa Ostrom. What's her deal? She's a photojournalist doing a story on the castle. She sure got me curious about that tower. Oh yeah? Does she know where the entrance is? I don't think so. Well, keep an eye on her, Nancy. Those photojournalists are born snoopers, you know. George, are you suggesting that Nancy is a second-class snooper? You're going to give our friend a complex. <laughs> oh, right. Like Nancy doesn't know she's the prime minister of snooping. True. I'm trying to meet with Professor Hotchkiss to find out what was stolen from her room, but she won't open her door to discuss it. That's odd. I wonder what she's so nervous about. I'll bet she's hiding something in her room. Like what, Bess? The elephant that trampled the library? She's probably just a little freaked. I mean, if her room really was robbed, you'll find a way to make her trust you, Nancy. I'll bet Bess's last slice of pizza on it. Hey. <laughs> Ladies, I need inspiration. Brain juice. A hint. They don't call us your trusty sidekicks for nothing. Help. I'm a little stuck. Isn't it about time you checked out the scene of the crime? I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Nancy. See ya. Yeah, but I need dust powder something. OK, so for this it says, when you touch several surfaces with the same fingertip, the oil begins to get used up, so the fingerprint becomes lighter and lighter. So for example, this one. This one's the first one, because it's the darkest, and then so on. But I don't have a light powder over a surface. Yet. Oh, he's ah, Nancy! Como ça va? Lisa told me you were in the Olympics. What was that like? Disappointing. Frustrating. Humiliating. Oh. What happened? It was the worst day of my life. To fall flat on my face with my family, my country, and the rest of the world watching. Dexter needs you to defrost that big bag of chicken legs. Oh, la la la, what does he think I am? A sous chef? I'll talk to you later. Ciao! I guess you are the sous chef, because who else is going to make it? Did you see I fix your radiator? Okay. See you, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Finally. Is that you, Brandy? Oh, I'm glad you're here. At the moment, my theory is rising like a magnificent souffle. I need to collect a few more ingredients, if you will, but it's a delicate situation. If I leave my room even for a moment, I fear the souffle will come crashing down in a heap. What do you okay. need me for, Professor? What I need is some information about the castle. Hard numbers. I've come to the conclusion that you are an enterprising and faithful soul. Therefore, I have decided to entrust you with this important mission. Who knows? If you succeed, I might whisk you away from the hotel business to be my personal research assistant. Well, Professor Hodgkiss, I'm not actually in the hotel business, but I'd love to help. Marvelous! Here's what I need to know. Not counting the towers, how many windows are there on the face of the castle? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. Well, I think I can look at one of the pamphlets. Hmm. Okay. Guessing that this is symmetrical. It looks like a door, but maybe one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Maybe five. And then the other side is five is ten, plus the one is 
11, maybe? Yes! Did you find the information I asked you for? Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget. Uh, 11? Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. No, that can't be it. It doesn't fit my calculations. You'll need to try again. Oh, man. Oh, wait. I can see here. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. No, but that's a tower, isn't it? I don't know. Yes! Did you find the information I asked you for? Uh, can you remind me of what I'm looking for again? Hmm, uh, I, I can't seem to find that one. Well, it, here's another one. What oh. is the model number on the elevator? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. The model number of the elevator. Okay, well, she gave me a different one, so I'm not complaining. 50964. Some practical purpose, but what? Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. Eureka! If there's one thing I like in a young person, it's ingenuity. Now, I've got work to do. Time to stir the cauldron and stoke the fire. But if you'd like to talk, I'll be holding office hours in the lobby between 3 and 6 a.m. Meet me then. 3 and 6 a.m. She's up early. Okay. Finally. It's fixed. Oh. An oiling can now? Let's go see what Professor Hotchkiss has to say. Oh, here she is! Nancy, dear, welcome to the witching hour. Isn't it marvelous to be up and about when others are sound asleep? I find my brain waves are at their most powerful during this time. <laughs> yes, this big old place does feel quiet at this hour. But do you think everyone is really asleep? I mean, if this is the only time you're away from your room, when else could you have been robbed? You're right on that. This is the only time that someone could break into my room. But why are you so interested in this robbery anyway? Let's not make ourselves look suspicious. Actually, it's Dexter who's most concerned. He seems to feel very responsible for everything going smoothly at the castle while Christy Lane is away. And, well, I guess things aren't going too smoothly. I'm just trying to help him out. I'd like to tell you more about the robbery, but I'm afraid it just wouldn't be good for my blood pressure. I'm traumatized, you see, because... The stolen item was a keepsake from a dear friend, and it was a cornerstone of my theory. I'm sure you understand. Can you tell me anything about this theory of yours? Well, you probably know by now that I'm a scholar of French history. <laughs> my specialty is Marie Antoinette. Oh, poor Marie, the most misunderstood queen of the 18th century. Marie used to visit the very tower that now belongs to this castle. I'm convinced that this place holds evidence that will forever change the way the world views Marie. But the walls have ears, so I'd rather not say any more right now. If you're really interested, why don't you go up to my room and have a look around yourself? You've been such a great help to me, almost like an apprentice. Oh, I've always wanted an apprentice. <laughs> Finally, snooping is allowed. Wow, Professor, that's really generous of you. I'd love to learn more about your work, but are you sure you don't mind? I insist! Your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every banana in its path. <laughs> oh, how can I stand in the way? Here's my extra pass key. I get back to work at 6 a.m. sharp, so just make sure you vacate the premises by 5.59 and put things back where you find them. It's all scientifically organized in there. What did you mean when you said Marie Antoinette was misunderstood? Everyone thought Marie did nothing but spend France's money on jewels and fancy soap for herself, while her people were starving. History books have upheld the myth that she was 
just a spoiled and heartless brat, but I don't believe it. What do you believe? I believe that she's been the victim of vicious rumors and lazy historians for too long, and that if the real story could be told, people would realize that Marie Antoinette was actually a good woman who wanted to help her people, but didn't know how. Hmm. See you soon. Goodbye. Oh, she just graciously let us into her room. Okay, we got a typewriter. <laughs> All of the chicken leg bones. Born November 2nd, a Scorpio like me. What a coincidence. No wonder she was so passionate. Married off at 15 and she had to change her name too. She must have been frightened. Her favorite color was purple like me. I wonder if she adored chicken drumsticks. <laughs> Despite the elaborate hairstyles that were the fashion of the day, Marie pretended to wear her hair loose, unpowdered, and natural. No evidence that she was unpretentious. There is no concrete evidence that she was the one who coldly declared let them eat cake in response to the news that her people were starving. Marie was immature but not cruel. Mm. What's in here? From Helga von Hanseldorf. Dearest B, marvelous to receive news of your progress. I'm sure you are onto something important with the medallion and the stained glass window, but I think the significance of the medallion must go beyond the message you've seen. I've looked through my family letters, and it seems that when Marie Antoinette gave her niece, Helga the First, my great 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 uh, great great aunt, the medallion, she told Helga to keep it safe as it was part of the great truth that she hoped would someday help to heal the wounds of France. Helga urged her to explain this great truth, but this was all that Marie would divulge. The truth can seem hard and ugly at first, but eventually its hardness becomes a thing of eternal beauty. B, you must find out the meaning of this. Keep up the great work, old friend. I know you'll be successful. Oh. So it was a medallion. More chicken legs. Video camera. Oh, I just took a battery. Something's missing here. Oh, I have to put the battery. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Hotch kiss to Earth. Come in, Earth. Oh, okay. I think I think we're rolling. <clears throat> now let's get a look at these hallways. So rich in detail. You'd never know this place was built in 1920. It's all so 18th C. Oh, and there's Marie. I feel so close to her <laughs> just being here. It's as if her spirit is in the air, sweet as the smell of fried chicken. <gasps> what happened to her? Just as she was talking about the fried chicken. Something's missing here. Oh. Guess I have to leave it in there. Here's her boots. I wish I could tell what time it is. Oh wait, does she have an alarm clock? Uh, I can't even see. Okay, I don't even know if she's gonna come back yet. That's it for now. Hello, my fellow night owl. Or perhaps I should say hoot hoot. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, did you find anything of interest in my room? I did pop in there, though interesting doesn't begin to describe the place. Would you mind if I went back another time? Of course not. Pop in all you like, just not when I'm working. See you soon. Goodbye. Okay, maybe she'll let me keep the battery charging. Okay, I'll just leave that there. And if she says anything, then... I don't know. <laughs> There's not a lot of direction in this game. Like, I mean, they don't always hold your hand, but... Especially with no checklist, I feel like I'm aimlessly wandering around. So Bess and George said 
that there might be another way into the library. So what if we used the elevator and climbed up from the bottom? There's something down there. Hmm. Wait, can I go all the way down? Oiling can? What is in here? The elevator's in the way. Oh. If I move the elevator up to get down, then I can't get over here because she'd fall. So where does... I don't know. We'll go up first and see what happens. close. Ooh. True stories behind famous portraits. King Louis commissioned a jewel tiara for her birthday. Set in the tiara were a ruby and emerald, a sapphire, and a 52 carat diamond, bigger than any diamond ever before worn by French royalty. She was horrified by the tiara's extravagance and refused to wear it. It is even rumored that she referred to it as my crown of ruination. She insisted on posing away from the palace at Versailles in the tower room, where she often visited to escape the growing turmoil. She refused to be painted wearing the tiara. King Louis was furious. She would not budge. She chose to ornament herself with a purple rose instead. Not just a flower, but a symbol of her willful defiance of her husband's wishes. Because her favorite color is purple. When the portrait was finished, she gave it to the Rochemonts in appreciation of their loyal friendship. Blah 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 blah. She refused to reveal the whereabouts of the tiara. Neither the tiara nor the magnificent jewels it contained were ever found. To this day, speculation and heated debate continues about what became the crown of ruination. Interesting. The hole. Motto forward. Hmm. I feel like I should write down this, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Sure is dusty. Okay, now I have the dust! Cool. Hans Axel von Thersen was a Swedish-French soldier 
and diplomatic agent who became a close friend of Queen Marie Antoinette. After execution, he wrote about her every year on the anniversary of her death until his own death. He must have been in love with her. Her diary recounts his political movements during this time. So he's helping them escape. He will be their driver. He instructed her to bring her jewels with her. She may be able to bargain with the revolutionaries with her diamonds. That commander was present. He took her jewels and threw her at the mercy of his revolutionaries. Okay, so the commander took the jewels. I cannot speak to the queen. Mm -mm -mm. Definitely in love with her. Dust. Ha ha. So from darkest to lightest is the code. Three star. Hmm. I think seven two. Okay. Yep, three star seven two is the code. Oh. Oh wait. So the latitude and longitude of Wisconsin? Should I do that? So the longitude was 90 west. And... Oh! Hmm... Okay. Negative 15, 10, negative 5. Interesting. A sly rabbit will have three openings to its den. Oh. 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 Negative 15. 10. Negative 5. It's a loud creak. What did that do? door open somewhere? <laughs> it opened something. <gasps> this is it? What is in here? A lighter? It's so dark in here. A key! What's this? Okay, can't take that. The castle's been empty for many years now. These hallways just echo in vain. And oh, how I miss you, my one-time son. My anger is dissolved into pain. I still don't know why you... I still don't know why you pilfered my wallet. The money could have hardly have mattered. That fifty dollars I'd have given you twice, but instead my poor heart you shattered. If only I could find you, we'd patch it all up. Talk through it as dad and son should. Perhaps you meant only to test my love. Perhaps you felt misunderstood. I want you to know that your old man forgives you. Old bygones are bygone with me. So I've left you one keepsake to remember me by. You'll sure be delighted to see. Go out to the garden, my old thinking spot, my refuge in hours of dread. Your luck charm is stashed where no stranger would look in the back of my old troubled head. Huh? In his skull? So this is goodbye, dear Dexter, farewell. You offered me much needed joy, and I'll never forget all the laughter brought me, my darling young rascally boy. Dexter's dad hid something in the back of his head. Okay, um, cool. Am I looking at any of these? Bugs. Oh, 
When he was good, he was very good. Dexter, the son in my life. Atta boy. <gasps> what? Ezra Wickford, who is Egan's adopted father? Ezra... Wait, what? Ezra Wickford, who is Egan's adoptive father. So, Egan's looking for the treasure, too. Best Attendance Award! Yeehaw! First vehicle. Demonstrating leadership among his peers in the Youth Recycling Project. When it rains, it pours. Uh-oh, the bad stuff. My son, the Vandal. Dear Mr. Workford, we're sorry to report that your son was caught in school grounds last night throwing rocks at the gymnasium windows. We have no choice but to expel him. Sad excuse for stealing. Dear Pop, I'm sorry for taking $50 out of your wallet without asking. I know it was wrong. I know you are very disappointed in me. I'm sorry. It will never do it again. I'm sorry. Your son, Dexter. Okay, so he tried to cash counterfeit checks. He had three different sets of false ID matching the checks. Arrested for felony charges of possession of false ID. Possession of counterfeit checks. Attempting to pass the checks in conspiracy. If convicted, he could face a prison sentence of up to 20 years. $50,000 bail. I'd rather see it burn. Dear Ezra, I have changed your will according to the directions you gave me in our meeting. In the event of your death, Dexter will have no recourse to inherit Wickford Castle, or any of your estate or financial holdings. Further, he will be unable to claim any association with or capitalize upon your name or reputation. <gasps> I am currently proceeding with your request to annul your adoptive relationship to Dexter, and to sever any subsidiary legal ties you may have to him. I will notify you when these procedures are finalized. On a personal note, allow me to say how sorry I am to hear of Dexter's criminal conviction and to urge you not to blame yourself. I'm sure you did the best you could with Dexter, but some children just turn out to be bad eggs. Nonetheless, while your disappointment must be profound, I commend your prudence and pragmatism in the decisions you have made to protect your estate. Wow, that's T. He basically just disowned him. <laughs> that's crazy. That's wild. Okay, so if I can get down there through the library vents, then then I can move the elevator. trial and error puzzles. Nancy, what are you doing here? <laughs> that scared me. Uh... I was just looking for the castle's soda pop machine. What you working on? I can explain, Nancy. But please, don't tell anyone that you found me here. If I get sent back to France, my fiancé will give up on me. And I will have let down my family again. Sure. How can you expect me to keep quiet while you go around destroying the castle? If you're willing to saw through this gate, then you must be the one who wrecked the library too. Nancy, I had nothing to do with what happened in the library. I swear, the tower holds a valuable French historical document. If I can find it and return it to France, perhaps I can make up for my failure at the Olympics. 
What kind of document? The tower first belonged to the Chateau Rochemont in France. When Ezra Wickford bought the tower, my great-grandfather was the master carpenter in charge of dismantling it and preparing it for shipment. One day, when he was working alone, he found a secret compartment in one of the walls. Then what happened? Inside, he found an old journal with a royal crest on the cover and a medallion with a strange blue stone in it. But he heard other carpenters coming, so he hid the medallion in his pocket and sealed the journal back in the compartment. Before he could get back to study the journal and return the medallion, the tower was dismantled and shipped to America. He never learned who the journal belonged to or what it said. Why didn't your great-grandfather tell anyone about his discovery? He thought if he told his story, Ezra Wickford might get angry, accuse him of interfering with the project, and try to ruin his name as a carpenter. So he kept quiet. So how do you know all of this? I was his only great-grandson. On his deathbed, he gave me the medallion and told me the whole story. He begged me to come here to Wisconsin to find the journal and return it to France. Or the medallion actually wasn't given to you and you stole it. What did he think the journal contained that was so important? The journal bore a royal seal. It must have belonged to Marie Antoinette because she used to visit the tower during the revolution. So perhaps it contains her confessions or perhaps it contains proof of her innocence. Either way, the contents of that journal could change French history forever. But how do you think the medallion fits in? What's its significance? I have no idea. I believe whoever hid that journal must have left the medallion with it as a part of their message. B but what? Nancy, do you think you could help me? Let me show you this medallion and maybe you'll be able to tell me what it's for. I might be willing to help you, but you have to tell Christy everything. I'm sure she'll understand. And then you won't have to sneak around in the middle of the night, haunting the castle with that screeching hacksaw. Okay, Nancy, I see your point. I will explain everything to Christy Lane as soon as possible. Now will you help me? I think this medallion will interest you. And maybe you'll have some idea what it's for. It's in my locker. Uh, will you go get it while I take care of something? The combination is 2665. I'll meet you in the locker room in a minute. Okay, Jacques. I am intrigued. I'll see you downstairs. Oh, you are the best, Nancy. Don't mention it. It's locked. <laughs> Interesting. <gasps> Ooh. Creepy, creepy. Oh, so that's where that secret door leads. I see. Okay, he said 2665. Jacques, darling, I'm trying to be patient, but I cannot understand what is taking you so long. My mother and father are traditional people, and they think it is highly unusual that you would ask me to marry you without demonstrating your commitment to me in any symbolic way. You know I believe that our love makes us richer than kings and queens, but I cannot live on hot dogs and mac and cheese forever. You said you had a plan. You said it would only take a couple of weeks, but it has been two months. I can't wait forever. Please don't make me give up on you, Isabel. Ah! <gasps> Ouch! Oh, someone must have knocked me out. It was... that stupid man. Headache headquarters. Nancy here. Nancy, it's Jacques. Uh, what happened? Are you okay? I don't really know what happened. I opened your locker, like you said, and then it was lights out Nancy. But you do have my medallion, right? They didn't find it when they picked me up off the floor? Oh la la, you can't be serious. I'm sorry, Jacques. I know how important that medallion was to you. This is too much. Oh la la! Unbelievable! Yikes. Let's investigate the locker room. Yeah, it's gone. D is for dazzling. D is for diamonds.
U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service. Our records indicate that your visitor's visa will expire within one month. If you remain in the country after that time, you'll be doing so in violation of the law. Hmm. Maybe there's something... in this one? Oh, I missed this part. Okay. Lisa, my friend, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen you. How are you? What are you doing in Wisconsin? Mm, arrive. Hotel, Plaza Grande. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Interesting. Okay. I guess her real name is Lisa. <laughs> so what'd you find in the library? Please, Lisa. You know it's off limits. Oh, come on, Nancy. You've been on the prowl. I can tell by the sparkle in your eye. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Aw, you're no fun. So tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. There was a little mix-up with the lockers, and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Hmm, do we confront her? Well, I was kind of confused. I was just trying to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. Does mm -hmm. your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. Sure. Even though you have a letter in Spanish in your bag. I'm dying to find a way into that tower. Where do they usually hide the secret entrances in weird old Midwestern mansions? <laughs> I guess I should know, shouldn't I? Too bad most of the places I've covered aren't any weirder than imitation butter. I wish you'd hurry up and find it, though, so we can check it out. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Later, Nancy. <gasps> you see your magazine? There's Maddie Jensen on it. That's Maddie Jensen. <laughs> she keeps popping up. Good for her. Thanks for coming down. I've been wanting to talk to you. How's your head? Did you slip or what? I'm feeling much better, thanks. But what was it you wanted to talk to me about? It's just that when I found you out cold in the basement and hauled you back to your room, I noticed all this red dirt on your shoes. I'm just curious where it came from. Red dirt? Hmm, I guess it could have come from anywhere. I really don't know. I hope I didn't track it around the castle, though. Uh, did I? No, you didn't track it around the castle. Guess it's a mystery. But listen, I don't want to find you out cold on the floor again, so watch your step, Missy. Hmm, or maybe you were the one that knocked me out. Maybe. Whatever it is, I'm sure you don't need my help. So, did you grow up around here? You could say that. Did you know the original owner, Ezra Wickford, when he lived here? You could say that. Did you know him well? They call it the past for a reason, okay? Because it's over. So, do you know if Ezra Wickford had a place where he liked to go and think? Some place he thought of as a refuge? There was a private area of the garden. Yeah. The entrance was hidden, so no one could bother him there. Do you think I could go check it out? Forget about it. There's nothing out there but dead weeds and crumbling statues. Were you allowed to go out there? Once in a while he'd bring me out there and teach me about his favorite flowers, but that was like a, a hundred years ago. Mr. Egan, that red dirt you asked clean. me about, it came from the tunnel that leads to the Queen's Tower. I should have told you in the first place, but I was afraid you'd be mad. I was wondering when you were going to come to your senses and fess up. Am I mad? Nope. If you must know, I'm impressed. Ezra Wickford set that secret door up so nobody would be able to find it. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with getting into that tower. Ezra told me that if I could get through the secret door, he'd take me up to see the Queen's Tower. Finally, I got into the tunnel, and when I came out with that red dirt all over me, he laughed. He was actually proud of me. So what was it like to go into the tower room? I'd say you earned the right to check out the tower for yourself, but you gotta get through that gate, right? 
There's an old skeleton key in the maintenance shed. Now that the storm's passed, you can go out and get it. But be careful. It's still dead cold out there. <sighs> Yay! I don't want to press my luck with you, but I sure would like to see Ezra's private garden. Could you tell me how to find it? It's nothing but wasteland out there. If you're bent on tromping around in the cold, go left when you get outside, away from the shed. Look for a wrought iron gate. You'll figure out the rest. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Hooray, we can go outside. I have to go outside downstairs. Nancy, I still cannot believe you lost my medallion. How could you have been so careless? I wasn't exactly careless, you know, and I didn't lose your medallion either. But I don't have it. Where were you, anyway? Weren't you supposed to meet me? Yeah. When I showed up, you were having a catnap on the floor. <laughs> Ugh, I would be ruined by you American women. Guess you'd better stay away from me, then. Goodbye. Au revoir, little Miss Nightmare. Dang, now we have... an enemy. <gasps> Outside! Okay, this is the maintenance shed. Whoa. Oh, this is the... what those switches need to look like? According to legend, it was Dexter's troublemaking that caused Wickford's disappearance from public life. <laughs> you don't want to turn out like Dexter Egan, do you? A counterfeiter, convicted felon, bad egg. Isn't it amazing that after 25 years in prison, Dexter Egan's release is coinciding with the grand reopening of Wickford Castle, now owned by the enterprising young Christy Lane? It's true, and rumor has it that Egan is determined to straighten out his life and make up for past mistakes. But how? Will he become Wisconsin's next chocolate milk tycoon? He said no comment. Key. Hmm, interesting. Don't know what that's all about yet. For crying out loud, didn't you read the keep away employees only sign? <laughs> it was an accident, Mr. Egan. I bumped the levers and suddenly all those gears just started turning. Look, this isn't a playground and I have a job to do. Mess with the ski lift again and I'll send you packing. Okay. This is where the garden is. It's locked. It's not locked anymore. Mm-hmm. Head. Oh, his head. The back of his head. Mm. <gasps> oh. There we go. Oh. It's locked. It's locked. Which key was it? This one? The medallion. Or no. A different medallion? It's locked. Okay, please nobody hurt me. Ooh, this music's going. Look, keep the stupid medallion. It's yours. Hey there, Nancy. You've been holding out on me, Mr. Egan. I read in an old issue of the Daily Telegraph that you grew up here, right in this castle. All right. I did live here for a few years, once upon a time. I was an orphan until Ezra Wickford came along and adopted me. But I left the castle when I was 16, and I never saw him again. 
that's the story, all right? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you ever come back to visit? Some things can't be explained, kid. It was a long time ago, and nothing can change it now. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. We know you were in prison. Oh yeah, we should watch Professor Hotchkiss' uh, videotape, because that's probably charged by now. Lots to do, and I wish that checklist was with us, but it's not. Okay, let's watch the rest of that video. Ooh, ooh, what's this? It appears to be some kind of peephole, but what, pray, does it peep upon? <laughs> Shall I peep? I do believe I'll peep. <gasps> the beauty, the colors. So this is what Helga told me to look for. Where's my medallion? <gasps> it fits. Note to self, high five team Hotchkiss. <laughs> and what's this? A message? Eureka! It says the diamond. <gasps> Again, what's with this battery? Ay, ay, ay. Let's see if she has anything to say. Yes, dear? Do you know anything about a tiara that was given to Marie Antoinette? The infamous tiara, of course! Oh, people thought Marie had this extravagant piece commissioned for herself, and they hated her for it. But really, it was her husband, King Louis XVI, who had it made for her birthday. Oh, she didn't want it. Refused to wear it. And then, a few months before the revolution broke out, the tiara disappeared. Was it ever found? It was never found. There were rumors that she had it destroyed, but no one has ever been able to prove this. See you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. I guess tonight we will also go down into the tower. I have to do this again. <laughs> Oh, it's a different one now? Okay. So I'm going back into the tower. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Oh. Okay, I don't know how to do that yet. Interesting. Hopefully this is the last time we have to watch the videotape. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Oh. Hot. Okay, so that's the rest of the video. So now, hmm. Hey there, Nancy. I'm trying to get into the tower, but I can't get across that big pit. I can help you, but we shouldn't talk about it now. Not here. Call me later. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Okay, I'll just call you then. This is Dexter. It's Nancy, hoping you can help me now. But why the sudden hush-hush? Do you smell a rat? A the rat. information you request is highly sensitive, young lady. That's top secret in case you were wondering. Now, I've been around the block a few times, and if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you can't be too careful. True. If you want answers, we do it my way, see? Okay. Sure thing, Mr. Egan. I just hope the phone's not bugged. All right, all right. Just give me the question. I think that's it for now. Thanks, Dexter. See you, kid. What? But I already asked about the pit thing. This is Dexter. I think that's it for now. Thanks, Dexter. Rude. Guess we can call Ned one more time, see if he actually picks up. For his girlfriend. Hello? Ned, it's me! Finally. Well, you're a sound for sore ears. Bess called me and told me your vacation is rapidly turning into another mystery. So who do you think the vandal is? I really don't know. It would help if I could at least imagine a motive. But why would anyone want to vandalize a beautiful old library? There must be more to it than meets the eye. Sounds like you better find a way to get in there and take a look around. 
already did catch up, Ned. Apparently, this castle's tower used to be a hangout for Marie Antoinette. Who's that? Ezra Wickford's wife? Are you kidding? Marie Antoinette was a famous queen of France. And she used to hang out in Wisconsin? No, silly. The tower was originally part of the Chateau Rochemont in France. Ezra Wickford fell in love with the tower and imported it to Wisconsin. And Marie didn't want to come along. Well, that would have been pretty tough for her, considering... Ned Nickerson, are you pulling my leg? <laughs> what do you mean, Nancy? You know very well that Marie Antoinette was beheaded in 1793, don't you? Well, yeah. I guess I read something about that when I studied the French Revolution. But when did Wickford show up? He didn't discover the tower until the 1920s, over a hundred years after Marie's death. Whew! I think I'm all clear now. Thanks for straightening that out for me, Detective. You are some pain in the neck, pal. Good thing I'm so cute. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for a crazy coincidence? Only if it's a crazy one. Ezra Wickford also imported the library, and it seems that he bought it from the family of Jean Leboeuf, the revolutionary commander who captured Marie Antoinette when she was trying to escape from France. You're kidding. So Wickford imported Marie's tower and her enemy's library? Exactly. Doesn't le bouffe mean the cow in French? Actually, I think it just means the beef. Hmm. Well, in any case, I bet the guy would be happy to know that his library ended up in the heart of America's Dairyland. Wait, didn't we read that Wisconsin's state animal is the cow or something? How do you think Ezra Wickford got his hands on Marie Antoinette's red medallion? Maybe Monsieur Le Bouff took it from Marie when he captured her at Varennes. And then Wickford bought it from Le Bouff's family when he bought the library. How do you think Professor Hotchkiss ended up with Marie Antoinette's green medallion? It sounds like Marie gave the medallion to the family of that Baroness Helga in Austria. Maybe Helga gave it to Hotchkiss when they became friends in order to help with her research. Put on your thinking cap. I need a hint. Hold on. Thinking cap on. Stand by for a hint. <laughs> Maybe you should talk to Lisa and see what she's been up to. Hmm. Bye, Ned. Bye. Glad you came down to talk. Get this. I saw Dexter walking out to the maintenance shack with this, like, green ornament thing in his hand. He's up to something, right? Maybe you should check it out. If you're so interested, why don't you go check it out yourself? I'd love to, but I really should get to work on my article. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. Hmm, she just wants us to get do all the work for her, and then she's going to come out in the end and steal it or something. Uh-oh. It's uh -oh. freezing out here. <gasps> Gosh, I can hardly feel my toes. I have the other medallion. I'm locked. The door. Ugh, it's freezing out here. What do I do? What do I do? If uh, I don't get inside soon, I'll freeze to death. Okay, Nancy, I get it, I get it, I get it. Maybe if we just get Dexter to be mad at us again. What the What's going on out here? Is that you, Nancy? <sighs> Come inside. It's freezing out here. What kind of a stunt was that, Missy? Sorry about that, but I was locked out. Well then, what can I say except good thinking? Thank you. All right, so we have two medallions. What else are we doing here? Nancy, I heard you got locked out. You could have frozen to death. So, what was Dexter hiding out there? You probably locked me out. I don't know. It just looked like your average maintenance shed to me. So, um, next time you give me a hot tip, Lisa, it better come with some earmuffs. Huh, I thought for sure I was on to something. I still think Dexter's shady. I'd keep an eye on him if I were you. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. I still think you are shady, and I'm gonna keep an eye on you instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's call Bess and George. 
Hello? Hi, it's me. How's it going, Nancy? Are things calming down around the castle? Not unless you find it calming to climb out of a stuck elevator. What do you mean, stuck? The elevator broke down? Well, that's what I thought, until I talked to Dexter, who said it was probably the power switch in the basement. But, Nancy, how could the power switch just go off while you were in the elevator? Maybe someone turned it off. But why? That's what I'm wondering. How did you climb out anyway? I climbed through a hatch in the roof of the cab and just barely made it up to the next floor. So you were standing on top of the elevator in the open shaft, way up high? Ugh, just the thought of it makes my stomach do somersaults. Anything interesting in the elevator shaft? Just a metal ladder leading up to this ventilation duct or something. Nothing unusual, except that the cover for the duct looked like it was about to fall off. Hmm. Maybe someone needed to inspect the duct and forgot to replace the grate? Or maybe the duct leads somewhere, like to buried gold or a hidden... Bess, that was Nancy's last case. <laughs> She's in Wisconsin now, not San Francisco. Wickford wrote Dexter a farewell poem before he died. The inventor of chocolate milk was a poet, too? Yum, I could write a poem or two about chocolate milk. <laughs> it says that he hid some sort of luck charm for Dexter to find. Where? Something about his old thinking spot somewhere out in the garden. Funny, but I didn't see any garden when I came in. Well, you can't exactly tiptoe through the tulips when they're buried under six feet of snow. Never mind my cheeky cousin over there, Nancy. When the storm passes, you should go out and see what you can find. I found Ezra Wickford's secret garden. You'll never guess what Dexter's boyhood luck charm was. Hmm, a rabbit's foot? A little green leprechaun? Guess again. A medallion with a red stone in it. Do you think I should give it back to Dexter? Oh yeah, like honesty is the best policy with creepy convicts? <laughs> I think George is politely trying to say that you should find out what the medallion's for before you breathe a word of it to anyone. You'll probably need it to solve this mystery. Absolutely. I went back to check out Jacques' locker, and I found a pamphlet about diamonds, a letter from his fiancée, and a warning notice from immigration. Did his fiancée sound cute in her letter? Actually, she sounded upset. She wants him to hurry up and do something, but I'm not sure what. Sounds like that guy is under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I hope he's not marrying her just to stay in the country. Help, I'm a little stuck. Those hanging chains in the tunnel are the key to getting across the pit. Look around in the tunnel for a clue as to what position each chain should be in. Mm. Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Let's do this at nighttime, but also we should take advantage and maybe look through Professor Hotchkiss's room. I just feel like maybe there's something else in there besides chicken wings. Coat. <gasps> what? <gasps> I got the last one. Dang. I love that they play this little music after each one is found. <laughs> Very celebratory. Yes, dear? I saw a letter on your desk from your friend, the Baroness von Hanseldorf. And I'm just wondering, did the medallion she gave you have a blue stone in it by any chance? Heavens no! Where did you hear such a thing? My medallion had a green stone in it. Anything else would be a mere imposter, a flaming faker, do you hear me? Mm -hmm. So you, you are the one that hit me over the head, hmm? What do you think of Lisa Ostrom? That Leslie, yes, a oh, real dynamo, but... Uh, oh, I told Chester that I would not require any maid service during my stay. I don't know why she didn't get the message. See you soon. Goodbye. Hmm. Ugh, I have to do this puzzle again. Okay, so the chains have to do with this. So maybe the symbols don't matter and I just do it in this order? <gasps> Ooh. Which way should I go first, left or right? Oh, well that's a dead end. Ah, oh, it's spooky now. What am I going to find in here?
Hmm, looks like some kind of prison. Hmm. Um... Okay, I don't think I can move these yet. Oh! No, I can move them. Oh, one of those types. Okay, something moved. Oh, were these always here? I don't know. I didn't notice if these stairs were <laughs> there or not, but okay. <gasps> Gold. Ooh. Ooh. The purple. Looks like a key looks like a keyhole of some sorts. Should I draw these symbols? Marie Antoinette. Slider puzzle. Oh, just a replacing puzzle? Okay. Corners first, or edges. Oh, they can rotate. Oh, 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 okay. I didn't realize that bottom part. Oopsies. Okay. This is a full corner, and it has to match up with the bottom parts. So this also goes... Does that match up? Okay. Yay! Oh. The book. Okay. Looks like a keyhole of some sort. Hmm. Okay, we have all the medallions. Let's go up to that area where you can put the medallions in. Yes, dear? Should we show her the journal? I found something that I think you'll be very interested in. It seems to be some kind of journal. I think it was written by Marie Antoinette herself. What? Let me see that. <gasps> this is it. I've been trying to track this down for 15 years. Where on earth did you find it? Yes, I think this could help prove your theory. But you see, I need to know what it says too. Because I've been... Nancy, I must warn you. I'll wrestle you for this if I have to, and it won't be pretty. <laughs> I'm sure physical combat won't be necessary, Professor. I'm glad to help you with your work, but I need your assistance in return. You're fluent in French, aren't you? Absolutely. I'll get to work on it right away. I'll have the translation ready in my room for you this time tomorrow. Until then, I mustn't be disturbed. Okay, I trust you. Where was that area? Okay. I don't know which one has to go where, though. <gasps> okay, um, I'm just gonna write down everything, <laughs> just in case. I wish I could read French right now. <laughs> and blue. Okay. We're 
getting closer. Ned Nickerson Hotline, can I help you? <laughs> well, hello there. I sure hope you can help. Hey, Nancy, I thought it might be you. What's up? I'm trying to decide what to do next. Any thoughts? You must be dying to know what those messages mean. I bet Hotchkiss would be happy to translate them for you. Bye, Ned. Bye. This is Dexter. What's up with those holes in the crest on the floor of the tower room? I've always wondered that myself. Seems like something's missing from the crest. Like different objects should fit in those holes, but I don't know what. Is that it? I think that's it for now. Thanks, Dexter. Hmm. Did she say she would leave it in the room? Or she was just gonna give it to me? I'm so glad you stopped by. I've translated the entire journal. It's fabulous. And as an added bonus, it includes Marie's official decoder, something no one else has ever found before. Can you translate this for me? Le diamant de misère dans mon journal. Now, where the heck have I seen that phrase before? Well, well anyway, it means the diamond of misery in my journal. What does l'espoir à ceux qui cherchent mean? Hmm, let's see. Well, espoir is hope, and chercher is to search. Hope to those who search. Can you tell me what this means in English? La solution se trouve dedans. Well, trouver is to find, and solution is just like it sounds, solution. The solution is found within. Got it. See you soon. Goodbye. So if we do it in the order of where the symbols were, the symbols had red on the left. Hope to those who search. Diamond of misery in my journal. Solution is found within. So is she going to give me the journal back? I guess she just left it in her room for us to find. Aha. My husband is like an impossible child. I still cannot believe Louis bought the Ciara when the French economy is in so much trouble. I told him I didn't want it. What does he expect me to do with it? I cannot wear it. The people hate me already. They call me Madame Deficy, as if the country's debt were all my fault. I wish I could sell it and return the money to France, but this would embarrass Louis publicly now. If he and I appear divided, the mob will erupt, they'll overthrow the monarchy in no time, and we will find ourselves kneeling at the guillotine. I have thought of a plan. I will have the tiara dismantled. There is a dear old jeweler, Claude M., in a village near Rochemont who will do it for me. I trust him with my life. Once the stones are removed, Claude will make the ruby, the emerald, and the sapphire into ornamental medallions. These I will scatter across the continent. The diamond is worth untold millions and must be returned to the French people, but not now. Not while the country is tearing itself apart. I will hide it as carefully as I would hide the key to my soul, so it will not be discovered for generations. Someday, when the medallions are brought back together and my message is decoded, the diamond will be found. But it will take an extraordinary person, and I don't believe it will happen until the wounds of this revolution have healed and history has brought a new, more rational French order of some kind. Finally, when the people's wealth is returned to them, this diamond of misery will be restored to this magnificent beauty. Tomorrow I will have my portrait painted by the great Marcel. I have announced that I will not wear the tiara. Louis is furious. He does not even know that the wretched crown no longer exists. I have sent the emerald medallion to Vienna to my dear cousin, the Baroness Helga, as a token of my affection. The ruby and the sapphire remain in my secret compartment where I keep this journal, but soon I will decide where to send them. My own court speaks viciously of me, and I feel terribly alone. I only hope that someday, years from now, my actions will be better understood. If you are reading this, know that my honor shall be blue, our courage should be red, and your loyalty shall be green. I wish you well, weary traveler. Got it. I think I see what the symbols in the stained glass mean now. Let's see. Purple rose, hold diamond, key of queen. But where have I seen a purple rose? And what's a diamond key? Purple rose. Okay, I think we're ready. Okay. Okay, she's holding the purple rose in her hand. Purple 
purple rose. I need something to pry these tiles off. <gasps> so I gotta put the medallions in. Um, so looking through the little peephole, the order should be red, green, blue. Red, green, and blue. And then we just put the key in. Looks like a keyhole of some sort. Right? Or not? Maybe it's this, this, this? Red, green, blue? <gasps> I did it. Whoa. Ooh. The diamond! Woo! Will you look at that sparkly rock? I knew and it. me without my sunglasses. Hi, Lisa. How did you get in here? I followed you, of course. Turns out a nosy goody two shoes detective is good to have around after all. Now, why don't you toss me that big honkin' diamond so I can blow this popsicle stand and never set foot in Lamo, Wisconsin again? Lisa, you must be kidding me. This diamond belongs in a museum in France. <laughs> yeah? Well, I belong in the lap of luxury, and that diamond's gonna get me there. Hasn't anybody ever told you to mind your own business? Yes. Oh, many times. <laughs> well, maybe this time you'll learn. Uh, my eyes! Don't worry. My spicy devil villain venom won't last for long. But I'm afraid by the time you get your eyes back, you'll have missed my grand exit. Rude. <coughs> so you're the one who trapped me in the elevator. Ooh, you are a smarty pants. But let's not forget about your little frostbite incident. I'm the rotten friend who yeah, locked you I outside too, you know. Just trying to keep you on your toes, Nancy. Didn't want you to get soft on your vacation. Are you the one who conked me on the head in the locker room? Ouch. <laughs> I bet that hurt. But I had to get the medallion somehow, didn't I? I hope we can still be friends. Why did you leave Jacques' medallion at Hotchkiss's room? <coughs> And Hotchkiss's medallion out in the shed. To spread suspicion around, of course. You know, to play with your mind. Plus, I was at a dead end. I got the two messages from the stained glass window, but then what? I knew you would figure it out, so I decided to put the medallions in your hands and let you lead the way. Why are you doing this? <coughs> Haven't you heard? It's a material world, sister, and I am a material girl. <laughs> Photojournalism pays peanuts, you know. And who wants to work for a living anyway? I was made for a tropical climate, lounge chairs and cabana boys. Why did you have to vandalize that beautiful library? Just a little translation mix-up. When I read the message from Hotchkiss's medallion, I thought it meant diamond of misery in the library. Whoops, <laughs> guess I went a little overboard looking for it in there. Anyway, enough with the questions, Nancy. You'll just have to read the rest in the papers. I've got to stop her. Uh, Life of leisure, here I come. <laughs> rude. Okay, how do I stop I've her? I've got to stop her. Uh, Life of leisure. I've got to stop her. How do I stop her? here. Yeah, yeah, it's all moldy. Darn you, Nancy Drew. You're the worst friend a diamond thief could ever have. I was never your friend. Dear Dad, to think I almost became friends with a diamond thief. Everyone at Wickford Castle is resting easier now that Marie Antoinette's journal and her famous diamond are safe and sound. The journal, the diamond, and the medallions are all going to be featured in a new Marie Antoinette exhibit in Paris. And it looks like everyone will be rewarded. <laughs> Except Lisa, of course. First, she missed her plane to Rio, and now she's going to be charged with attempted grand theft. Professor Hodgkiss is thrilled because a French government has granted her permission to publish Marie's journal in the U.S. before it gets returned to France. This ought to help prove her theory about Marie's character once and for all. 
Thanks to Jacques and his great-grandfather's efforts to find the journal, the Brunet name is being celebrated all over France. In the meantime, Jacques and Isabel have eloped. It's so romantic. I showed Dexter the poem that Ezra Wickford wrote him, and he was relieved to know that his old pop didn't carry any hard feelings to his grave. Hmm. All the talk shows want Dexter to tell his story on national television, but he keeps turning them down. I guess he doesn't want to be famous or infamous. But when Christy Lane called and asked Dexter to be her business partner, he accepted. Aww. With her business sense and Dexter's expert knowledge of the castle, I think they'll make a great team. So, you know what they say, Dad. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. It's never too late to change <laughs> history. Me, I'm determined to go out and enjoy this snow before some other case comes up. See you soon. Love, Nancy. Well... That was Treasure in the Royal Tower. What did you think? I I liked it. I liked it a lot. Did I like it more than the th first three? Hmm. Yeah. I think just because like the length of this game, it's the longest game out of all of them for sure. Tons to explore. There were parts where I felt a bit lost, but I just kept going back to the phone, talking to people, having to redo puzzles over and over again. It's just a Nancy Drew thing, I guess. They all were suspicious, and it could have gone anyway, but yeah, we knew. Lisa was just too sus. Too sus. Just glad everything worked out in the end, and the next game in the series is the final scene, so I hope you stick around for that. But before you go, I have some bonus content, and um, let's just get to it. Here in my hands. I got a signed autograph from Lonnie Manella, the voice of Nancy Drew. And I just wanted to open it on camera and share it with you guys. Um, she was doing a live stream and uh, you could get autographs signed live and then I missed the live stream but uh, you could also just get it signed off the live stream and she was donating to charity. Unfortunately, it is over. Yeah, I was lucky enough to hear about it on <laughs> online and get in on it before it ended. I don't think I've ever shared my name on here. Um, I just started adding it to all the descriptions and stuff, but my name is Teresa, uh, if you wanted to know. So it says, To terrific Teresa, may all your dreams come true. Lonnie Manella, P.S. It's locked. Nancy Drew. I love that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I've never, never, ever felt the desire to want an autograph from anybody. I don't know, it just, it never occurred to me, but when I saw this, I was like, no. That's the autograph I need in my life, is a Lonnie Manella autograph, and oh, I love that. May all your dreams come true. And I went to good old Walmart, bought a frame so I could frame it. Here we are. It's all nice and framed now. They had an option where you could fill out something that you wanted it to say. So that's why she wrote, may all your dreams come true. And I don't know, I'm gonna hang it up or put it somewhere um, so I can see it. And just be reminded that Nancy Drew wants me to follow my dreams. It's just something special I wanted to share with you guys because I, you know, I feel like out of anyone who would think that's cool or would like to see it be you guys. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day, whatever you are doing, and I will see you next time. Bye.